very first blends that we ever came up with is our Big Racks. It's an annual and perennial. Um, I formulated this many years ago, and here's a little, little thing about us and what I'm trying to accomplish. I'm a third generation farmer. So in other words, all I know is how to plant and grow things. This is what I do for a living. I started out as a landscaper many years ago. I, I, did, I had a side business, it was, it was landscaping. We sold a screen topsoil. And I found out with some of my customers, they didn't want to mow their lawns. They wanted to have something to attract deer. So what I ended up doing was putting in food plots for them. And it was working very, very, very well um, because they, didn't, they could have their deer right in their backyard and watch them when they'd come up for the weekends and they didn't have to mow their plots. Well, then it kind of accidentally came to me into a whole nother level. And I've only been doing this, you know, while I was doing the food plotting, I ran into some deer farmers, um, people who wanted to raise deer. Um, they weren't farmers per se, but all of a sudden they wanted to put up a fence and raise deer. Um, they wanted to have things that were going to be able to grow that they could grow to feed their deer. So um, we ended up working on formulas, what deer like and what they crave and what they need. And then it kind of started working into antler growth. Then it worked into fawn growth. And then I started, I started coming up with blends that I called, this one here was called Big Racks because it grew Big Racks because of the protein content. But it was main, my main for, source of this was variety. Most of our blends, a lot of guys sit there and say, oh man, they're so complicated. Well, they are and they aren't. Um, the main issue that I'm trying to get a whole, across to you people is variety. Um, I'm all about building a restaurant. This is what I want to do. I want to build a restaurant, but I want to build a restaurant that you can go to. And if you want to go to a restaurant and have Chinese, you can. If you want to go to a restaurant and get steak, you can. If you want to go and have Mexican, you can. I'm building one restaurant that you can keep going to. You do not have to travel because deer are mammals and mammals are lazy. To keep deer on your property, deer only need certain things to live by. They need a food source, they need a bedding area, they need a water area, and if they can get a mineral site on them, which we'll touch on later, um, but that is the main thing to keep a deer on your property. The main source of why deer leave your property is rule of thumb, look in the mirror yourself. Predators, we are their number one predator, and they know it. You got wolves and bears and coyotes, and I, I understand these things, but we are their main predator. So the object is, is to build a food plot. It means to leave it alone and let it grow and let them come in and out of it and they will not be nocturnal. Like whether you bait them, if you bait them, rule of thumb, they'll become nocturnal. This way they won't. They won't. So the Big Racks blend right here is our number one go-to when we first formulated it. And it's very complicated just because of all the different varieties that are in it. It's got, you know, the different clovers in it, which it basically has one, two, three, four different clovers in it, but it's got the purple top turnips and it's got the chicory and it's got the alfalfa. Now, clover has got a shorter root base. Alfalfa has got a longer root base. Chicory, longer root base. A lot of guys like to plant in spring. I'm not a spring planter. I don't believe in spring planting. I will put in beans early. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you on that. I don't have a problem putting in Roundup Ready beans, whichever one you want a choice. But I would always try to make sure that they're Roundups already or Glycosudafate uh, ready so that you can kill them, uh, the weeds, and still grow some protein. The main source of growing this good is weed control. Weed control, if your pH is good, your fertilizer is good, and you have good weed control, it will work. Another reason why I'm not a big spring planter, there's a couple reasons. The main reason is the weed control. Second one that I have is if it, if it does get off to a good start, what if we don't have rain into June and into July? Well, then you have issues. You're gonna be running into a bunch of issues. Um, so the main thing that I would like, I always try to talk to people about is, all right, if we do not have any rain for a month time, weeds don't need rain to grow. So they are gonna overtake your plants. Now, in a perfect world, let's just say you have good weed control 
and you have plants that are going to be like, oh my God, we're getting rain every week and it's been a wonderful summer. It's just been great. You la, you rah, rah. Well, let's say these plants get so uberly huge, then your relative food value goes down. Once a plant gets to a blossom or makes a flower, all of the nutritional value went into that seed. So you might have big radishes and big turnips, but to me, it's a food source for late season, but I want it peaking when you're hunting it. So that's why I plant from middle of July to the middle of August, and depending on what state you're in, um, but I want to get at least 45 to 60 days of growth on almost all of our blends before it freezes up. Now, if we can get a little bit more, it's okay, but I don't want to get 120 days on it because it will blossom because most of these plants are a 60 day plant um, before they start reaching full maturity. Some are 80 day, but most of them are 60 and it gets back down to relative food value. If you can get it in the pre bud stage or the pre flower stage, that is when you're gonna get your most nutritional value out of it. So this was our claim to fame. This basically built our company. Um, it's an annual and perennial. It does have you know, rape and turnips in it. Um, but I like that because it'll also shadow and shelter the, the alfalfa and the clover that are slow growers and allow them to get some time to have some structure before the frost comes. So that is the main issue with that. That is what I'm trying to accomplish with this. Um, it's been working very good. Um, customers are just buying it in droves yet to this day. One of our better blends that we have is their Big Racks. So even though it's an annual and a perennial, um, I do have this growing right now approximately. I got one plot that I have that says seven years now it's been in and it's still doing fine. I just fertilize it every year and it's still growing very well. So. This is one of the, the one of our main blends right here. Mm -hmm.